what is going on guys it is your boy Asesso here brings a video here today bring you guys a photoshop tutorial how to create your own very cool we're going with like simplistic circle gradient kind of title going on here um basically if you guys have no idea what we did we did this on stream uh, on Monday about two weeks ago or so where basically uh, we took a concept in which uh, basically what happens on Monday is we take someone's concept uh, of a design that they probably showed us and then basically try to elevate it and make it look really cool so this is the concept that we had in that video I forgot the person's name I apologize but hopefully you comment down like that was me uh, don't lie um because I remember the names anyway so right very cool concept very just fun little elliptical uh, ellipticals ellipses kind of you know what I mean so uh, yeah but the only thing missing for me was like the contrast so of course I went ahead and kind of nailed that aspect on the with, with gradients so i'm going to show you guys how to do this today so in the description down below should be a nice cool template for you guys to use um in this template to kind of have all the circles already laid out for you guys um <clears throat> this thing that i just hit right here was like player area so let's say i don't have any like kind of like standing like you know profiles of people like doing like the the crossing the arms thing and whatnot right um but as you put like you can to play like four people like right here you know what i mean so if you wanted to have like a picture of like a profile people like crossing their arms uh that's my best <laughs> not an artist uh but yeah if, like if you want to put it in the center with if it was like a bigger head or whatnot you can put a you know an area where that can be where someone's little players you know where is that or whatever right and then you can have your twitter your facebook your whatever social media is on that side the sponsors of the team if whatnot and or you can just keep it the way i had it personally which was simply just taking this uh the phase logo just putting right dead smack in the middle in this example we're using phase it's a i just use their media pictures um so yeah so hope you guys enjoyed this video today of course two likes on the video you guys see secret down below which must be the psd of the video that you guys see which will to be i believe this psd not the one i'm probably gonna do so just keep that in mind anyway i'm gonna see you guys in a video and let's keep this thing going all right guys so let's go and get this thing going so i'm gonna go ahead and click back on our thing i'm gonna hide this um so yeah this template is more or less something i'm gonna be using today's video of course for me personally because i already kind of laid it out the way i wanted to um but for the instance for the reference just so you guys understand what you're basically seeing on this concept here is me using the ellipse tool here and then using my rulers to kind of like i just guessed the uh, the middle where you uh, you can just simply guess in photoshop if you press ctrl r it brings up the rulers and if you take the horizontal line first i guess you would say it doesn't really matter which one you take first but the horizontal line first and you kind of guess where the middle is like i'm just looking right here by the way i'm gonna say like around like here you feel this little snapping feet uh, feature this in Photoshop that is telling you that hey this is the document size this is the middle of it same thing with the vertical line you kind of guess where it is and it'll snap for you so I just took the middle of the uh, document size here I took an ellipse tool and when I clicked in the center all you have to do to make a perfect circle is hold shift right but if you guys did not know if you wanted to keep it at the same orientation and or same the point of interest uh, where you clicked originally all you have to do is hold alt as well so as you can I did one circle here you know another circle right here another circle right here and uh, they're all just using either a fill stroke or a, 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 a fill or a stroke fill, excuse me, right? So the fill stroke, uh, I keep saying fill stroke, that's two different things. Fill would be like the entire thing filled in. And the stroke would just be if I turn this fill off and turn the stroke size up, you'll see it's more a stroke. So basically, it's very, very easy for you to kind of compose yours together. As you see, I did on mine was... I basically just took a really big circle here. This right here is another yellow stroke. This right here is another uh, a pink stroke, and this right here is like a, a skin color, I guess, tone stroke. Um, peach color, color, uh, peach kind of color, right? So it, I did use for some reason I used stroke sizes as well. I was kind of like saying I could probably just use like just taking a circle. I could probably could just do this, for instance, right? I can probably just go ahead and uh, is this you, right? Yeah. I can probably just take a full circle like so, right? Fill this in, turn off the stroke, turn on a, a, a fill circle. And if I want to make different ones, I have to just make a, I can just make a duplicate, right? And then make it bigger. And then just change this color so you can see the difference really quickly, right? So you can either do that as well. That's the weirdest. I could have chose any other color besides that and it would have worked. But yeah, as you can see, it's a very simple kind of like, you can just do this as well. You don't have to use stroke because you can kind of like guess where the size would be to kind of fill that space. Just use regular old size circles and then you can just put your picture in there. So for that is now done. You guys understand that. So let's go ahead and get into the actual, uh, the part of the video that matters. <laughs> All right, guys, so now that I got that out of the way for you guys, just want to kind of get that clear in your heads and good to go. So basically, um, we're going to be starting off with, I'm just going to use my template circles, by the way, right? Just kind of like I already did it. I kind of show you guys an example in the beginning, so I hope you guys understood that. Um, it's like I said, it's very simple. So I'm going to take my first ellipse here, which is this black circle. It's going to reference what's going to be going on inside this circle right here. So whatever color you change your circle to when, whenever you make your ellipses and your circles and whatnot, it really doesn't matter whatsoever because you're going to be changing it with a gradient in a picture anyway, right? So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to take this circle here. So I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this middle circle so you guys can know. Middle circle. And I'm going to go over here on my other screen. And I have a picture already that I'm dragging in currently. Just like so. 
Right, so uh, I just got these off of the, the Twitter, um, face, con uh, face Clan Media Twitter and whatnot, right? So I'm going to go ahead. So once I have my picture here, what you're going to do is you're going to basically select the picture, right click it, and over over that middle circle, we're going to go click on uh, Clipping Mask, uh, Create Clipping Mask, excuse me, right? So now I'm going to have this. So naturally, you want to make sure your sizes of your pictures are uh, uh, at least somewhat of a bigger size to kind of house the dimensions that we're in. So currently, I'm in a 3,000 by 1,000 uh, dimension um, like size document size right here. It's basically like the Twitter header dimension, right? So for your instance, if you don't have pictures that are like, let's say if you, you throw in the picture in Photoshop and it's this small, right? You're going to find yourself with the issue being that your picture is going to, what if you made it bigger, this is rasterized for the example, right? So I'm going to quickly unrasterize it. So it's like, this is what the picture quality would have been, right? But since my picture was rasterized previously, um, me making a different like size wouldn't really matter. But for the sake of just showing you guys, let's just even make it even bit, uh, smaller. So let's say this is the picture size you start off with, Control T to free transform, and I make it bigger, you can see that it gets blurry, right guys? So be sure you uh, find pictures that are, of course, a good size for you to actually handle, but if you look at this size now here, it's not blurry, right? It's a very, it's a very clear difference in the clarity and the like the lines themselves. Um, one thing I like to tell you guys, if you guys don't have no idea what to do um, when it comes to like trying to like make pictures look a little bit cooler and or aesthetic and or more tense, um, what people like to do is select on your picture itself, go to filter, and you can do this before you apply the gradient. You could even have you don't even have to apply a gradient if like the colors of your pictures are really cool because it has some really cool blue kind of like nice dullish uh, vibrance tones. Anyway, I'm gonna use camera filter raw on this picture here. So what that allows me to do is brings up this table here, which is kind of like a CC correction. So basically, if I were to click in for a second, you see a lot of times a lot of times excuse me in uh, people's uh, projects where they take the clarity and like throw it up very very high. A lot of you guys probably like, this is like a color question I've been trying to do my entire life. It's literally just one setting, right? So you can see it's really cool. Um, it's one of those things that it's either make or break on the picture itself. It really depends on the picture for me. Um, the reason why I'm doing this personally is so that my gradient when I use a, you know, the gradient that I use, period, I'm going to you, show you when I turn it on and off, um, will make sure my my like contrast is really, really vivid and very like precise and or not like uh, one simple hue tone of like, or one simple... Uh, brightness, you know what I mean? So there's that distinct highlights and shadows when I put the clarity up very, very high, as well as taking dehaze, which takes a lot of details and kind of combines them together to give you guys a more clear picture. Um, so I'm going to put that up as well. So I'm going to press OK. Right, so then you have this really, really nice, super contrasted picture, which will help out. And if you guys really want to as well, I would even go into it again um, and take my highlights and th even throw it up a little bit. All right, so, right, you don't want to make it too, too much. It might be a little bit too much. We'll see. Anyway, right, so now that you've done this, you're going to take the, on the adjustments table under your layers, you're going to go to gradient map right here, and you're going to go right here to, uh, I already have this one. So if you guys want the same red that I'm using, I'm using pure black on the uh, shadows, right? And the red that I'm using currently happens to be hex code 422323, okay? So once I've done that, I'm going to go ahead. Oops, I forgot to press OK. My bad. Press OK. So now what I can do here, I'm going to take this gradient overlay and make sure I clip mask this as well to, uh, this is probably going to be guys super annoyed, so I'm going to take out, out the template for a second. Right. Cool, let me take it out the template so they don't get confused. Right. So now I have these two layers right here, now clip mask to this one middle circle. So now you can see it looks pretty good. Now, honestly, I'm going to say it looks a little bit too dark, so what I would try to do is go back into the picture itself, and let's say clarity needs to get lower down, dehazing might need to get lower down, uh, we're going to take our whites, we'll put them up a little bit, press OK. And we're just trying to find that balance. And I would say that's pretty good, right? That's not bad. If you need to as well, you can even go into the gradient map and change the red itself to a different highlight color if you need to, like, move it around a little bit. But for now, I'm going to say that looks pretty okay. And we're just going to kind of roll with it right now, all right? Because I know on the other one that I have here, it is actually a pretty intense red on the outsides, right? The middle picture is kind of, like, soft because there's a lot of uh, white and or light going on in that picture. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. So now that I've done that, the next part that I did was this little side ring here. So I just took a random picture. Um, I can even take the same picture, really, but I'm just going to take another picture. I'm going to take a number two picture here. Wait, what's this one? This is the side one, right? So I'm going to take this and be the small stroke inner, we'll call it. Okay. I'm going to take this picture here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and just immediately clip mask it. So for this picture here, I don't want to show anyone's face. So if I look over here, I really use this picture. You can use probably any random picture ever. But what I wanted to have it to be was I wanted that sort of like pattern and or like those lines and whatnot that are going on in this picture here or in this entire concept, I guess you would say, right? Like this picture, like over in the background here, there's nothing showing. I'm not showing anything. I'm just trying to 
kind of give myself a, a cool little randomized pattern of like dark and like lights. So that's kind of what I did here as well. I, I didn't really kind of put anyone's face in the uh, inner circle here. This is more or less just a circle to kind of house the color correction itself, right? So let me make sure I hide this. I don't know why I have that open, right? So on this one here, I'm going to go ahead and this is the picture. I'm going to go ahead and go into the gradient map, click the massive gradient map as well to it. So now we're looking right here, by the way. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on, I believe it was something around this color here. That's a little bit too dark. So I believe it was this one. Let's see. It does work out very much. Cool. So, so you can see here, it's a little bit, there's not too much highlights going on. So I want to do is I'm going to move it over and, or if I need to, I'm going to make it a little bit more bigger as well. Right. Reason being is I want to make sure I have those highlights and shadows in there, both of them. So I'm going to do as well as I'm going to go into filter camera filter raw uh, camera raw filter and I'll put up my clarity and I'm going to put my, uh, my, uh, excuse me, my whites and highlights pretty far up. I know it doesn't really matter, but we're looking for the outside to kind of have that concept here. So something that even like taking a nature concept might be a good idea for you, but I think that looks pretty good. And I do look, it looks pretty good, honestly. So the reason why you're probably like, oh, it doesn't look that great. So, so it's because it's pink here. If you remove that, you can see the color scheme a little more better. So if you ignored that pink for a second, you got it. You got it, right? So next up, we're going to just take this little purple one or pink, whatever you want to call it. And basically we did red, uh, you know, a grayish tone and then red and then grayish tone for the backing entirely, right? So I'm going to do the same exact thing for this one here. I'm going to take another picture. Uh, excuse me. I'm just going to take the number two picture again. And we're going to put it in here, right? Yeah, we'll put his face in there. So this is the number two picture. We're going to call this, or this is the, uh, the, the third ring. We're going to call it third ring. Okay. So number two picture again, take this. I'm going to clip mask this. Now I'm going to put this person's face in this ring this time. So if I need to make it a little more bigger, I will just like so, right? So you have one picture of the guy's face right here and I'm going to take another picture, which should be a different picture of someone else's face right here. Nice. And clip mask this as well to the third ring, just like so. So you're going to have two faces now here. So this is where you want to kind of like uh, comp uh, composition and or think about what picture is going to be inside your header itself. And I see these, these pictures right here are pretty good. And I want to make it a little more bigger. So it's the same kind of height. I probably could uh, kind of fix this a little bit because this head is a little bit bigger than this guy's head. Obviously, it's, it's just different perspective and or different lengths, but you want to kind of keep it a little more similar. So realistically, I would kind of revisit this picture here. So they're kind of like at the same distance. So it doesn't look really awkward, but it doesn't look terrible. So I'm just going to keep that as so. But the reason being is I want to make sure that I have everyone's face being featured on the header itself. So it's going to be a collective uh, organization header for phase, right? I don't know what team this is. I really truly see us go. We're going to guess. I hope it is. I have no idea. I truly do not know. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and make a, I'm going to actually just take this gradient here. So whatever gradient's in this picture right here, right? I'm going to take it. So I'm going to hold alt, take this gradient map. That's in the, that basically the red gradient map that I made for the middle one. I'm going to drag it right down to our, uh, two and three in our third ring. And then just click mask it, right? So you're going to have this right here. Perfect. So now as you can see, you're getting that really cool shadowing kind of color and or excuse me, contrast kind of color, right? So now that I have this, I think the last one I did on the outside, we're going to get rid of this one because I don't know if I did anything on the outside here for that. But whatever number four is, let's see what this picture is. Okay, so I got this. I'm going to put that one on the right side. I'm going to take number five picture that I have over here and put this one on the left side as so. It's kind of cool because they both have this really intensive uh, kind of face going on here. And now you can kind of see that this is a little bit darker than these pictures here. If it is so, just take this picture as well. Like, like I said, go back into it, right? Filter, camera filter raw if you need to. Fun little thing you can do is take the clarity, bring it up a little bit, right? Get that same intensifying look. So if I look over here as well, I'm going to put them on this one as well, right? A little bit of clarity on it so you can see what happens. Actually, I'm going to make it so you can see on both uh, both before and after, right? Just like so. All you have to do is click this little Y by uh, down here, right? So you can see how that works now. And I'll do the same thing for this one just because... Like I said, it works. It doesn't work. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. I just know I like to use it as most, uh, pretty much a lot, as, a lot. <laughs> I just use it a lot, right? Cool. So now with these two pictures here, I don't have to clip mask them to anything, right? There's no circle on these current, um, uh, you know, pictures here. So I'm going to just take my gradient, which I want to take this one right here, right? The same one we had right here, right? Hold alt, drag it down below. And now we're going to have this. So as I can tell right now, immediately is that it's not dark enough. So that's my issue is going on in here as well. So taking this and seeing it all in its full glory, you can start to see that you need to go revisit your gradient. So I'm going to take my shadows. All that is missing is my shadows is not dark enough. So I'm going to take this and bring my shadows pretty, pretty dark, right? Hex code 040405, press OK. And I said that's a lot more darker and a lot better, right? As you can see from this right here, 
right? You see how this looks like there's like a sheet of white over the entire stuff? We want to, we don't want to have that. We want to have clear sort of like, um, you know, highlights and shadows being like introduced, but in a nice way. I would say though, this over here is a little bit more, uh, I guess, darker than this over here. So if I need to take this picture, go back into this, and if I need to, I'm going to take my blacks, just lower them down. So I'm kind of trying to match it up. Take our blacks, lower them down. Also, dehaze is a really good way to get contrast as well. It kind of matches a little bit more now, so I would just say to take the highlights of this color here. You know, take the highlights and or whites, excuse me. Whites, put them up a little bit. Kind of match them up a little bit better. So I think that's a little bit more accurate. So now that I know this is the right gradient to use, I'm going to go ahead, click on this. I'm going to make a new gradient editor, right? So this is going to basically apply the same gradient, excuse me, or make a preset of the same gradient that I just made currently just right there. Press OK. And I'm going to take this here now, go back to this gradient here, double click on this, open this up. So now you can see the preset is now right here. Then you can just click on it. So now we have that same ratio going on here, which is all nice and cool and even. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to take this phase logo really quickly so we can just get it out of being hidden and put it right dead smack in the middle. Just like so. Perfect. So now that you guys can see, we basically have the entire sort of like the concept kind of done in a sense, right? The concept is pretty much done at this point. What is up next is basically all those little simple, simple little things to kind of add to it to make it just look that little more further, just a little more better. And uh, so I'm gonna show you guys right now. So one thing I did was I took this ring here. I took another ring, see this? Oops, not this, excuse me. This little ring right here. So basically all I ended up doing was we're gonna just take above everything besides below the phase logo. Go here, I'm gonna get the ellipse tool again. All right, I'm gonna make a pretty nice big circle here. And I'm just going to use this right here. Remember, color of the circle does not matter too much. And if I need to, I want to make sure I space this visually and not mathematically in a sense. This is one of those little instances where this logo right here is kind of like, I guess you would say it's unbalanced in a way because you can't put it in the center and have it way a different way. So I'm just going to put it, um, I guess, visually correct and not uh, mathematically in the middle. As you can see, it's not mathematically in the middle, right? It's a little bit further down. All right. So. Now that this little yellow thing is here, this is just going to be, this also looks pretty cool, the yellow. I would probably add a secondary color, why the hell not, right? Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a random picture here. I'll just take number five, no, four, right? Just take number four, I'm going to drag it in here. Reason being, this is gonna, another one of those instances where I'm just kind of adding color. I just want to add color in a way, right? So I'm going to make it pretty big and then just take a region where it just, add, just has a random highlights and shadows. So it's headset kind of like, see that, right? right there so it's just one of those instances where i'm doing the same thing for this so you can use a random picture maybe you have random pictures that pretty much work for what i'm doing here but uh this is what i want so now i'm going to take that gradient that we use right here right this is that gradient right here hold alt drag up to it and then clip mask it just like so so now we have another instance where it has these nice little colors going on here as well so i love it how it's looking so far um i guess i will add these little white lines really quick because that's a really good indicator of just random things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to basically make a new layer take these rules again Take this right again, the ellipse tool, click in the middle, hold Alt and Shift, bring it out. And what I'll do this time is I'm going to make a simple kind of like pretty good size here. So I'm going to make this white, a nice white stroke, as you can see, right? White stroke now. So I can do here, if I want to, I'm actually going to make this a pretty solid even color of four. Uh, excuse me, even number of four. So what I'm going to do is I can just press Control J to make a duplicate of this white stroke that we just created. And then just duplicate it as many times as I want and or make it bigger like I'm about to right now for like this instance here and then another one control J and make it bigger once again maybe like this instance over here right so I can do now is I will basically take all of these right here I'm gonna rasterize them reason being because I want to erase them you guys you, I guess you can if you want to click on all of them at the same time or, or click on one of them at, uh, at the same one of them after another one at a time there we go Jesus <laughs> and use a layer masking tool like right so take a black brush on a white little masking tool and it just basically erases it um does it work as planned nope because i'm not erasing the right one i thought this was the middle one obviously this is this one over here so i can just erase it like now like so right i'll go to this one i uh, use the clipping mask which basically takes so if your clip mask was black if you wanted to just fill it in with black for a second that gets rid of everything so if you want to take a white brush then and fill it in you guys can right that's something that that's kind of like you can do that right just so you guys know so layer mask, make sure it's black to erase on a white layer masking and then just erase it just like so and we'll make it look pretty cool. I think it looks pretty nice. Sweet. So now what I can do is add a little bit of, uh, I guess you would say a little bit of a, uh, like a, like a light source, right? See these little light sources right here that are going on. So basically for this, what I ended up doing was I clicked, I hold control 
with this little moving tool, right? If you guys and I know, if you can hold, if you hold control and click on anything, you can see that it's going to select everything that you need. So if I select on this line here with control clicking with the moving tool, it'll give me that line that I want. If I select on the this little logo right here, it'll give me that logo that I want. If I select right here, it'll show me where that ring is. So it all depends, right? Everything's layered on that way. So if yours, for instance, if you have something in groups, just go up to this moving tool here and change it from group to layer. Ta-da. You're welcome. I just saved your life. Um, cool. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna find this ring right here, which I like it right here, right? I'm gonna control click on it. Uh, not here. I want to click on the ring. There we go. There's the ring. So what I can do now is I'm gonna take a new layer right above that ring. Okay. I'm gonna take a nice red. So I'm gonna take a red from the, uh, I guess the pictures themselves. I guess this high vibrance red is pretty much okay. I'm just gonna simply just click around it and like drag my mouse. Not, I'm not gonna put it inside here. So it's going over it. See how like far out my circle is? And how like I'm just kind of like guiding the highlights a little bit, right? So there we go. So now I can do is change it from uh, blend blend mode normal to like a nice linear dodge add, and then lower the opacity as needed, right? So the same thing I'm gonna do for this inner circle right here, right? So with this circle right here, right? So I'm gonna click on the uh, thumbnail of it. So hold control on that thumbnail, make a new layer right above uh, that circle, just like so. Take that red again, and we'll just make it opposite. So I did it on the top on this side. I'm gonna do it on the bottom on this side. I went on the bottom on this side. I'm gonna do the top on this side. I just kind of keep that even. Nice little even balance there, right? Perfect. Now I'm gonna take this linear dodge add, just like so. Lower the opacity as needed. And I'd say that looks pretty good. Cool. So I did also add a little bit of a uh, glow for uh, other areas as well. So if I want to, for this instance here, I'm just gonna make a simple, I'm gonna be using a lips marquee tool for this. Cause I'm gonna put a, a, a highlight out here as well. Or a shadow, who knows? I'm gonna see which one. Right, so I'm gonna click in the middle, and the reason why I'm using this is because it automatically gives me that marquee tool selection that we want. I'm gonna have to zoom out a little bit further to zoom out a little bit more with the circle here, right? Perfect. So like around here, right? So now I have this nice little circle that gives me the selection automatically. So when I make a new layer, I'm gonna make it right above my gradient right here, okay? And I'm gonna take a darker color like so. I'm gonna go ahead and click. Actually, I'm gonna use black so you can really, really see it. Just a pure black, right? So this marquee selection is only selects what's inside of that selection, as you can see, right? So on this new layer, we're gonna take a black and we're just gonna go ahead and give ourselves a nice little indention there. And then a nice little indention here. So if I just press control D to D select, you can see it adds this really nice little shadow with us and it looks pretty cool. So if I need to, I can just press control J to make a duplicate of that, right? And then bring it in if I want to, bring it above everything really quickly to see if I can put it anywhere else. Maybe like right here, look, well, looks pretty good, right? So if you want, obviously this has lines right here, as you can see what I'm talking about, these lines are that are right here, right? This line that's kind of like cutting out because it was on the top of the header before, right? So all you have to do is take your eraser and then just erase that on both sides, of course. I'm like, it's above his face. I'm going to kind of just like let it be there. I don't want it there. So I'm going to put it right there, right? Just a little more aesthetic, uh, aesthetic kind of things, right? So last but not least, what I ended up doing was just adding a few little, I guess you can see little, little patterns as well. That's a lot of stuff that you guys can do on your own kind of time. But basically, for an example, if you guys want to do it really quickly, why the hell not? I'll make it right below this layer right here. So I'm going to make it where on top of this, uh, these two images. So make a new layer. Actually, I don't really need to, but we're going to use the uh, ellipse tool again. Click in the middle here. And I'll just do it on a little more on the inner side this time. And I'm going to make this stroke fairly big just like so. And with this instance here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rasterize this layer, right? So then I'm gonna immediately do is take my fill, lower it down to zero. The reason why I'm lowering my fill and not my opacity is because what the fill does is lower, I guess in a sense, the opacity itself, but it allows any layer styles that are on the actual image, um, which in the sense there's no image here, but on the layer itself to be still visible. So if I load my opacity to 100%, you're not gonna be able to see either the picture or the layer styles, but if you lower your fill to 100, uh, lower, to, lower to 0%, you can see your layer styles, but not your images. So that sense, I can then click on this and then go on my patterns here. And you can add some pretty cool patterns. So as you can see, we're gonna add like a cool little pattern here. Um, you don't have to use divide, you can use multiply for like black, right? Uh, you can, I'll just use this one for an instance, right? So now I have that being right there. So if I want to now I can make a new layer above that, uh, uh, Great, uh, excuse me, that pattern overlay, but I'm going to really quickly rasterize it, right? And I'm going to make it black, pure black. So it's still there. You can, you can still see it. it's still there. Uh, reason why I rasterized and made it pure black is because currently, as you can see, the actual uh, 
uh, pattern overlay itself is a little bit of a lighter tone tint to it because that was just how I made them. I just made them not pure black. Um, but for when I rasterize it, it'll give me the option and it basically change the entire color of it. And now it's basically its own little kind of like stock, I guess you could say. And then if I press control U and take my lightness and put it down to negative zero, it'll make it pure black, which I want. And the reason why I made a new layer above that is because I'm going to take a red now and kind of just give it this cool little highlight feature, right? So as you can see, that's pretty much what I did there. So the last thing I guess you'd say you want to know is just kind of like putting a very, very simple, um, kind of like a nice little touch of uh, color, I guess you'd say, right? So I'm going to change to like a nice darker red. Whatever tone you're using, if you're using a blue, make sure you guys can use like a, a darker blue or, or not, super not saturated over here. Just go below this line. Let's pretend there's an imaginary line for you guys, right? Imaginary line. Just make sure you're below it. So all of this over here. Just don't use this. Just use whatever's in this area right here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click this one. I'm going to use that one, right? And it makes it easier because the layer style blend mode uh, linear dodge add really makes it uh, look good. So blend mode linear dodge add. We'll go out here a little bit too if we want to. You know, kind of add a little something, something over there. Take my eraser a little bit and erase where I don't want it. And then all in all, I'd say... That looks pretty, pretty good, right? Might see how like dark this is on the outside. I made mine super, super dark on this side. So if I wanted to, just once again, just kind of like uh, if you need to, you can also move this right here. It's kind of like a balance feature. So this is the highlights, or this is the shadows. This is the highlights. So if you need to move it more towards the shadows, it'll make your highlights a little more uh, exposed. But if you move it more toward the highlights, it'll make your shadows a little more exposed. So if you need to make it a little more darker, that's the way you do it. If you already have your shadow as black, okay? Nice little cool little tip for you guys. So I'm gonna kind of keep it right around here for this instance here, right? Yeah, I like that, it looks pretty good. So, um, last but not least, I'm kinda gonna really just quickly, where are these at? So I'm gonna hold control with my movement tool, get rid of that really quick, and then click on this. All right, so that's right there. I want this one right here because I wanna make a new layer over it, and I'll make some of this red, just to kinda finalize this. So red one here, red one there, perfect. Cool. So that's basically it, right? So in this instance here that I was talking about that one time you can put like a player in the middle here to kind of have a player in the middle. Then you can have all those social medias right here. That's pretty cool. So if you want to be like uh, twitter.com or twitter.com slash SOHQ, right? I'm, for some reason I use Time New Roman. I don't, I forgot why. Oh, I didn't remember why. Anyway, right? I'll take this font here. Oh, I'm using the demo of Mont because I did not buy it. So it doesn't have a slash, but I'm going to do a quick little cheat sheet and just switch the font to something else, and then it will have my nice little slash now. That's not the best one to use. This really does not matter, but I'm just trying to, you know, make it look... God, that's terrible too, but, you know, social media is here, and then you can have sponsors on that side here and kind of have that nice little balance. So, basically, there I am. There it is. That's all it, and I'm pretty much done. Um, Yeah. I guess that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys do enjoy today's tutorial here today. It's very fun, very cool, and it's definitely a style that can be well known, uh, well used. Um, you don't have to use circles. You can use a rectangle or anything in here, right? So if you want to use a polygon, you can use a polygon for any of the shapes. By the way, I'm just giving you guys a lot of hints. If you guys did not know already as well, if you want to use a polygon, you don't have to use six sides. You can use four sides, three sides, seven sides, nine sides. It does not matter whatsoever. So you can make continuously different, different designs, and also. Obviously, as you can see, you can add a little bit of a uh, texture to it. So you want to add a secondary color, kind of have these little lines going through. That looks pretty cool. So who the heck knows? It's one of those things where you can just take it and evolve it to whatever level that you wish to put it to or not, you know, or, or whatnot, right? So anyways, thank you guys so very much for watching. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, of course, if you guys want to check out my Align Pack, the Align Pack is $6. I'll put it in the description for you guys to purchase. It's a Selfie uh, Pack. As you can see, you can make some really cool things. This right here was the same stock that I used. Or this one right here. No, I think it was this one, right? Let me control click on it, please. Thank you. Or I believe it was this one right here, where I used for this header right here, as you can see, this little stock right here. So what I did was I just changed the color to red, right? Just change it to a red. And you have this really cool stock to put around, you know what I mean? So it's a very cool stock pack if you guys want to choose to use it. Um, But yeah, $6, really cool purchase. You have a lot of different assets as well. I'm going to quickly just show you guys two or three. You know, like one, two of these, three of these. 
you know, they're really cool, really dope. So if you guys appreciate it too, if you guys want to purchase that, you want to support. Um, yep. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, for like the fifth time, uh, two likes on the video. You can see it down below, which wants to be the PSD of the video that you guys see here today. But it's not going to be this one. Like I said, it's going to be the phase header one that I did for the actual uh, live stream and whatnot. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys later. Comment down anything you want to see me do below. Follow me on Twitter, at SSWHQ. And uh, that's going to be it for me today. Enjoy. Love you guys. See you guys next time. So I switch you out. Peace. Not to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay as productive as possible, please. Thank you. Bye.